Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com weekend update show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a really uh, good week of trading. A lot of great action. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, like, subscribe, share, uh, come aboard. You know, come aboard, spend some time with us uh, Monday through Wednesday and on the weekend video. 15 minutes trying to give you an unbiased take of the equities markets on the day-to-day -day basis. No guessing, no opinions, uh, just based on data collection and the relevance for the next trading day. That's it. Not not further than that, not you know beyond that, uh, just for the next trading day. And if you look at the equity tape this week, a lot of things have changed from uh, our last update on Wednesday. If you guys remember on Wednesday's session, you had uh, Tesla come out with earnings. Uh, as I was recording the video, uh, this was before... Uh, the Q&A session, the conference call, the stock was pretty much flat. And after the conference call, you know, Elon Musk just didn't uh, really give the shareholders, you know, a lot, or at least didn't give the, the traders um, and investors a lot of really big optimistic boom of this quarter. And the market sold off Tesla, right? Uh, Netflix came out with earnings. Um, you know, their subscribers rose by 8% because of the crackdown of uh, uh, password sharing, but they sold the stock off. Uh, Meta, that had a huge run in the last, you know, several months, several weeks. Uh, news came out on Friday that uh, their threads engagement since the launch uh, is down nearly 70% on like 13 million viewers, uh, 13 million uh, subscribers. So that took a big dent. And the most important part is what we haven't seen in the NASDAQ 100 or the QQQs is we finally saw a week that was not only red, but we saw a week that not only did we lose the five day moving average, which is the short term sentiment, we lost the 10 day moving average. And if you are uh, an avid subscriber to this YouTube channel or in the live webinar, or even follow me on social media, you kind of know the PS60 theory stems around the 10-day moving average, which is the birth of the trade, right? Five days is the shortest term sentiment, but the 10-day is the birth of the trade, and it could spill out for multiple, multiple uh, sessions. But we'll get to that uh, in a second. So the question is, you know, we've been in a big, big bull market run. I don't think anybody is uh, denying that. Even the biggest perma bears, um, you know, have you know pretty much lost for words. And even if we do have a back test this week into this, you know, 271 level, 371 level on the queues, ultimately the bull market is still way intact. For for us to have a problem, okay, for the bulls to have a problem uh, for a longer term time frame, we would have to lose the 50 day moving average, which is 355. So we're still 20 points away from that. Uh, this week you have earnings. Uh, the big numbers this week are from on Tuesday from Microsoft and Google. And on Wednesday, uh, you have Meta. All the other ones traditionally been usually on the following Thursday. Um, they got pushed back. Um, uh, Apple got pushed back. Um, um, AMD got pushed back. Uh, Amazon pushed back. And NVIDIA is like two weeks prior to that. So the big ones this week uh, is going to be in the tech space. Um, Tuesday, Microsoft and Google. And Wednesday, uh, you have uh, Meta, right? A bunch of you know, Meta, eBay. Uh, you have a bunch of Dow components as well, Boeing, uh, 18 Tico Cola, so forth and so on. But from our point of view, my you know my niche is the Nasdaq 100, uh, the beta names, the mega pack, uh, mega cap technology names, and this is kind of where we want to uh, focus our attention. Uh, last time we spoke, and this is kind of where we talk about uh, you know speculation, right? Speculation. They were coming for for three weeks. They were coming for the $300 calls. So you guys probably heard me talk about that. Uh, and nauseam going into the earnings, the 300 calls, the 300 calls, the 300 calls. Well, the 300 call buyers got paid, right? They definitely got paid because the runner from the 300 call buyers was from like the 270s. And it went on, you know, went on what? On Thursday, on, excuse me, on Wednesday to 299 and change. So I'm assuming they got paid out. The ones who didn't get paid out, I'm assuming what the rest of them did was 
you know, sell their 300 calls and roll them over into the 330s, 340s, 350s, 360s uh, that we started seeing towards the end of the week. Those guys obviously, uh, you know, lost money. But again, if you are, you know, if you are uh, procreating your account the right way, uh, you're playing with house money. Anytime you're rolling up, uh, rolling up your 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 contracts for the next series, you're you're taking the majority of the risk off the table because you're trading smaller and allocating a smaller quote, quote unquote AKA house money. So they'll be okay. But the market did sell Tesla, okay, and that's the most important part you have to understand. Uh, they did sell Tesla. You know, we had some great pivots the last couple of days of this week. We'll talk about the pivots in a second. Uh, we had some really great moves. Tesla closed below the 20-day moving average. You can see uh, the last time it held the 20-day moving average was on June the 27th. We lost the 20-day moving average. We followed through yesterday uh, on, on Friday. And you can see how much room you have left here. You have a lot of room left here uh, to the, the possible 150-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. And when a stock has such a big run, as we all know, phenomenal run, absolutely exceptional run. Uh, we traded to the long side, we traded to the short side. Uh, but now that we're below uh, the 20 day moving average, you know, we're going to watch this thing this week. You know, it attempted a dead cat bounce on Friday. It actually went green and they sold it off into the close. Uh, you know, I want to watch, obviously, uh, Tesla this week. You know, is there a possibility you could have a dead cat bounce? Absolutely. But for me to get back to be long biased on Tesla, Tesla would need to reclaim at least 270 on the close, which would be. Uh, the 20 day moving average and to have overnight risk on, you know, these are the numbers here, the five and 10 day moving average, you would need uh, Tesla to reclaim 277 on the close, right? So those kind of my numbers uh, going to this week, if, you know, Tesla shrugs off this earnings and uh, earnings uh, uh, kind of a little bit of a debacle, uh, reclaims back the 270 and then ultimately to put risk on, uh, to have your money work for you on, on the swing side, uh, get above the 277 level. What I'm looking for this week to the downside is a confirmation of this week's lows, right? That's what we're looking for. If we, if the bulls uh, start building below uh, this week's lows, then look how much room we have. Again, the whole uh, the whole point of the PS60 theory is understanding that stocks trade from supply to supply on, on the upside, and they trade from demand to demand to the downside. Well, here's your 20-day demand. It's below that, and the next demand is roughly around 243, 244. So there's a lot of room. Guys, the stock closed at 260. There's still a lot of room for uh, a good amount of uh, value to the downside. But again, we have to see uh, if the bulls can reclaim the 20-day or start losing back. Again, we're prepared on both sides of the market. Uh, look at the queues. Here's kind of where we start the day. Uh, we start the week. The queues close uh, below the 10-day moving average. And that is going to be a problem if the queues, if the bulls can't reclaim back uh, two, what was it? Let me see what the 10 day is. If the bulls can't reclaim back 377 on the close, well, the next demand is 371. It's, and it's, again, it's not a big deal. If you're, if you're, uh, if you're an investor, if the queues go down another four points this week, they could just gap down four points. You're not even, you can even feel it. But for traders from the app, for, for the, for the avid, um, experienced trader or even inexperienced traders, just the trading and the intraday cycles that are active. You still have about four points of room to the next measure potential to 371. Where it gets very, very sticky for the bulls is if we lose 371 on the close. The way we lost uh, the 20 day moving average on Tesla, right? That brown line, the way we lost the 20 day moving average on Tesla and continued lower, well, that's kind of where the bigger picture on the Q is going to be. If we start losing uh, any close below 371 on the Qs, that's what we have some pretty good measure potential all the way down to the 50-day moving average. But again, uh, I don't want to put the cart uh, in front of the horse just yet. Again, we're trying to play it day by day, trying to take advantage on both sides of the market. But going into uh, going into Monday session, if if the bulls lose uh, this 375, yeah, expect more downside on Monday. And that's exactly what we're planning for. Um, I would say, you know, majority of my uh, focus list is to the downside just to see because majority of stocks close at the bottom of the range. Is it possible something wakes up this week? Absolutely. Again, that's the whole point of being uh, not trying to be right. You're trying to be prepared. That's the whole thing is why we try to be prepared on both sides of the market. But uh, this was the first close uh, below uh, the 10 day moving average. If we start losing uh, the 10 day moving average uh, on Monday, yeah, we're going to have uh, some more uh, some more downside and that's not going to be uh, good if you are a bullish trader, but again, if you're an investor, uh, I think uh, I think you will be uh, I think you will be okay. It's just a matter 
of intervals that could be lost, uh, whether it's right off the word go, uh, whether it's right off the word go is or throughout the day. But it's just super duper important to, to kind of understand uh, the dynamics of where we are in uh, the retrospective, retrospective of things. And uh, we'll get to the pivots uh, in a few seconds. Let's look at some uh, let's look at some individual names uh, going into uh, this uh, trading week. You have uh, Microsoft uh, again held the 20 day. They are reporting on Tuesday. Watch the 20 day guys. Right. I understand they had a, a great run on Microsoft and great AI news, all that stuff. But keep an eye on this thing below the 20-day moving average. Again, we just described, uh, we just kind of showed the, the importance of the 20-day for the Qs, what happened with the 20-day loss for Tesla. Um, watch Microsoft this week. If this thing starts losing the 20-day uh, and, you know, the market bakes in its recent run-up on earnings, so who knows, maybe you could pull uh, a Tesla, maybe you could pull a Netflix. Again, keep this in mind. This is what we talked about uh, the whole time before Tesla's and Netflix earnings. The question was, was their moves, was there really bigger moves that they had in the last couple of months were going to be sold off into earnings, right? Were they baked into earnings? So far, uh, Tesla with their, uh, you know, even though uh, they had their all-time highest quarterly revenues, it was due to price cuts, right? So, you know, it, it's, again, it's like winning uh, the Tolls Dwarf competition. No offense to any Tolls Dwarf in the, in, in the crowd. But the point is, you know, we, we want to keep an eye on, you know, is this going to be a theme uh, this earnings season for the, you know, the really big run up for, for uh, you know, for the mega cap group, or is it just going to be case by case? We'll see exactly uh, what happens with Microsoft on Google when they report on Tuesday, but the 20 day uh, for Microsoft is going to be a problem. Uh, look at AMD, right? AMD uh, lost its 100 day moving average, put in an inside day on Friday. Now watch AMD this week, right? Keep an eye on this bottom channel. If this thing starts confirming and uh, Q start confirming the 10 day, you're gonna have more downside. You know, keep an eye on that as well. Uh, look at a name like uh, Meta, right? Look at a name like Meta. Meta, you know, had a great run. It lost the 20 day. The only thing that saved this was this linear regression line. If Meta starts losing this linear regression line this week, again, you have more downside ahead. So, you know, there's a lot of names that close below their channels. A lot of names close right above their channels, but the key is definitely the Qs. Since most of these stocks uh, mirror the NASDAQ 100, uh, if the NASDAQ goes and your leaders go, you're going to have uh, a lot more aggressive selling come in just because of the nature of gravity. Again, every single stock eventually gets pulled and no matter how wonderful, and again, I, I can't reiterate how wonderful this run has been on Meta and how wonderful this run has been on NVIDIA and Microsoft and Apple that gave us the greatest gift in the world on Thursday and Tesla and everything else, eventually the gravity bug does pull in and you have to be naive uh, to think that it's not going to affect you. So it's gonna be very interesting to see Monday uh, how the bulls uh, handle uh, what started out as an inside day, you know, primarily they were just kind of dead cat bouncing that we closed below, it actually didn't turn into an inside day. It, t it turned into a resumption day from the 2% sell-off on uh, on uh, on Thursday's session. So it's gonna be very, very interesting to see what happens this week. Uh, again, I'm prepared uh, for more downside if it comes on Monday. If not, there's always going to be something that is lit up on the in the options market that is going to probably give us an idea of which way uh, the market's going to go. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about some uh, pivots from uh, from Friday. Really, really strong session. Congratulations, guys! Especially uh, especially Tesla. Uh, Tesla. We had a great pivot on this thing. Uh, here is the pivot on. Let me just get rid of this. I opened up the wrong browser by accident. Uh, this was the pivot from Thursday. Remember, guys, Thursday there's no video. Uh, so here is the pivot from Thursday. Uh, Two seventy six daily held uh, and also held uh, seven fourteen lows for experienced traders. If it, below, if it builds below, can flush. Well, it flushed, right? It took down the 276 level, uh, traded all the way down to, uh, traded all the way down to 261, right? Traded down to 261, great, great trade. And then we took it overnight. Uh, 261 and 260 after our lows needs to confirm for more downside. And here's Tesla, right? Tesla took down every level, took down the 76, uh, took down the 61, traded all the way down to 255. I'm definitely watching the bottom of this range here. Uh, from the June 30th bug, because if this thing loses that, again, there's a lot of room to the downside. But Tesla's been awesome, uh, both sides, long, short. It's just been a really, really uh, great trader. 
Uh, here was Meta, right? So I, I saw this news. Um, I saw this news really early, right? Uh, Meta reported Threads user engagement fell 13 million, nearly 70 percent from the July 7 peak. Uh, watch for selling. You know, I don't think. And I said, I go, I don't think many people saw this, and the stock actually uh, gapped up. And you know, so just like a lot of names, uh, but 302, if it builds below, can flush. Here was Meta, right? Took down the 302, which is basically confirmed the 10 day. That's why we're we're watching the the queue so intensely. It lost the 302, got all the way down to 91. Just a really, really big move. Again, congratulations for all you guys caught that as well. And that was kind of the theme for the day. Uh, AMAD didn't confirm. Uh, AMD didn't confirm. Queues confirmed on the close. Uh, 375.72 is the 10 day. In case this gap gets pulled, which it did, uh, you know, it, it got sold. It could bring in more sellers. And the queues put in its lowest close. Uh, in this whole formation, guys, closing below the 10-day. Again, something to watch uh, going into Friday. Uh, NVIDIA got hit as well. Uh, 450 held twice. If it builds below, can flush. Here was NVIDIA, right? Here's the whole 450 area. 450 was the low uh, on uh, July the 14th. It was the low from Thursday. It took out the 450 and went all the way down to 441. Uh, they were coming for this week, this up-and-coming week, for the 440 puts and the 430 plus just something to keep an eye on uh, as well. Uh, UPSC never got down to 5340. Uh, Rivian, again, this is where we talk about second entry. It got above 2690. Uh, it only went up like 25 cents, and then it really aggressively went down. Uh, Netflix, another example of continuation from its earnings lows. Uh, 432, if it builds below, can flush more. And yeah, here is the flush. Yeah, here is the flush. It took down 432 was the previous day's low. It took down this whole channel and went all the way down to 423. Again, more downside ahead if the market doesn't rally. Uh, and that's it, right? And that's it. So going into this week, guys, very, very important levels. Watch that uh, 375 area on the queues because if the queues get pulled, so will everything else. If you are uh, on the fence or want to try uh, the PS60 theory, guys, click the link below. Uh, I think it's in the comments. Uh, Kyler has it pinned. Um, you know, try it out for 30 days. Again, nobody trades these pivots uh, on the whole planet uh, the way we do. It's a very, very specific niche that I um, kind of created in 2012. Uh, everybody has their own kind of way of trading pivots. We trade it very, very differently than everybody else. So if you are kind of stuck in the mud or looking for a little bit of an identity, uh, there's, an, a, you know, there's kind of a, a break away from the quote-unquote normal uh, that you're used to. And if you are interested, come check out the, uh, the webinar for 30 days. If nothing at all, it's going to give you a different approach how I view at the market that somebody's been doing it nearly a quarter of a century. So maybe it'll give you a little bit more of a clue of what to look for in the market that you kind of haven't been uh, exposed to yet. But anyway, guys, have a great, great weekend. God bless. Stay healthy. Stay happy. And God's help. I'll see you all on Monday. Take